For these problems, we want to combine these different radicals together. Now, in order to do that, we need to break down each of them separately and see which ones are going to be common terms. Remember that the only way you can add or subtract radicals is if they have the same index and the number inside of the radicals are also the same. So with this problem right here, I'm going to start by writing 8 cube root of 2. And I can't do any more with that. That would be as far as I could go with that radical. So I'm going to move on to the next one. Now, 72, uh, if you're not sure what that's going to be, we can always do a factor tree on that. So we can do 8 times 9, and then 8 is 2 times 4, and then the 9 we can write is 3 times 3, and then 4 can be written as 2 times 2. Now, one thing you can do with these is every time you see a pair of these, that actually becomes a perfect square because that would be three squared. And so that would give you a nine. So you can take the square root of nine and then square root of four you can do uh, as well. So this is a four and this is a nine. Now, if I multiply those together, we get 36, which means that I could also rewrite 72 as four times uh, is 36 times two. Okay, so 36 times two uh, is another way that I could rewrite 72. So instead of eight times nine, if you didn't think of 36 times two right away, then you would go down this path and you'd still arrive at the same result. Now, the idea here is you wanna try and find the largest perfect square that you can in these because we know we can take the square root of 36 and then that number would come outside of the, the radical. So for we'll do the same thing for the next one here. For this 32, okay, um, instead of doing a factor tree, what I'll do is I'm going to start by just dividing it by 2. I know that 2 is divisible because the last number is even there. And if I divide 32 by 2, we get 16. So inside here, we get 16 times 2. Now, 16 is a perfect square, and so that's what you want to do. So for, for these, a, a good strategy would be if they're even, Start by dividing by two and then see if you have a perfect square. If not, then just keep dividing until you find what the largest perfect square would have to be. So in either case here, if I'd started by dividing by two, that would allow me to find what that perfect square is. Now that I have that, I'm going to use the product property to break these apart. So I have this right here. I'm breaking all these apart. Okay. And I'm doing that purposely because now I can take the square root of these separately. So square root of 36 is 6. And then I have square root of 16 is 4. And I have that. So I have minus 6 square root of 2 plus this will give me a 20 square root of 2. Now the last two, those are like terms because they're both square roots but I cannot do anything with the first one, the eight cube root, that's a cube root and I have a square root. So although all of these have a two inside, they're not like terms, okay? They have to have the same index and the number inside has to also be the same. So I'm gonna do eight cube root of two there. And then these last two here, I can do 20 minus six, that's 14. And I'll have 14 square root of two. So again, these last two can't do anything with that because the indices are different. So that's my final answer there. Eight cube root of two plus 14 square root of two. Now let's take a look at these next two examples here. Now this is four cube root of two. And then I have 54. Now this time I have, both of these are cube roots. So when I break this number down, I wanna try and find the largest uh, cube root possible. So cube root means I'm looking for an eight or a 27, something like that, or 64. Those are perfect cubes I want to look for. So if you take 54, and if you divide that by 2, you'll get 27. And 27 just so happens to be a perfect cube. So now we know how this will break down inside. So we'll do 27 times 2 inside there. So I have a 4 times cube root of 2 there. And then this I'm going to break apart. I'm going to do cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2. And so I get here, uh, the cube root of 27 is 3. And so I get 2 times 3 times the cube root of 2. 
But two times three, we can now multiply that. We get minus six, Q root of two. And these are, these are like terms. Both of them, there's a two inside and both of those are a Q root. Which means that I can subtract these. Four minus six is a minus two. And I just put the Q root of two on the end. And that would be the answer for that one. One more, uh, this one down here, I have Q roots and I have square roots. The first one, I'm not gonna be able to do anything with that. So I'll just leave that alone. That's already broken down as much as possible. All right, now I have a, a 128. Now 128, again, if you don't know what, what factors are of that, you can always start by dividing it by two because the, the last number is even. So if you divide it by two, you're gonna get two and 64, okay? Now 64 already is a perfect cube. We know that four times four times four gives you 64. So now I know how we're going to break this down. We're going to do nine cube root of 64 times two. Now these other ones, the 18, I can write as nine times two. And the eight, we can write as four times two. So I have 33 cube root of two. I have minus nine, and then I'm going to break each of these down. I'm going to do Q root of 64 times a Q root of two. And then this one, I'm going to break down into square root of nine times square root of two plus five times square root of four times square root of two. So I'll do that. Next, I'm going to apply and go ahead and take the Q root. The Q root of 64, we already said was four. So I got that one we'll do. Square root of nine is three, so that's three square root of two. Square root of four is a two over here. Now we'll multiply those together. Nine times four is 36, Q root of two. I have this one, can't do anything with. I have five times two, which is gonna be a 10, so I get 10 square root of two. We'll combine this together, 33. Now these, what I have left here is I have two cube roots that are like terms I can combine together because they both have a two inside. And then these radical twos are both the same as well. So 33 minus 36 is gonna give you a minus three. So I have minus three times the cube root of two. So I can write that here, cube root of two. And then I get on the end here, 10 minus three is a seven. So I get seven square root of two there, uh, but I can't do any more with this because One's a Q root and one's a square root, even though they both have a two inside, they're not like terms. So that would be your final answer.